Hello everybody, this is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. This is the second video or part two of video where I covered the 19, what I would call fairly valued stocks in the electronic technology sector as created by FactSet. The first 10 I did were the ones that I kind of favored the most, but I want to be careful saying something like that because, for example, Intel could have easily been one of my top 10 favorites. That's the first research candidate we're looking at here. And once again, I want you to notice the lesson in valuation, you see this very, very high valuation that happened during the 1999 to 2000 tech bubble, if you will, was also referred to as the period of time as a rational exuberance. But Intel is a very interesting semiconductor company. We all know the story, the chips they make. You can see there is a lot of cyclicality in their earnings, but on the other hand, you also see that they always are profitable. Their dividend record is significantly better than their operating record. You can see that they've steadily increased their dividend over the years. They did freeze it in 2013 and 14 apparently, but otherwise they've got a really nice record of increasing their dividend every year. The stock is undervalued based on the fact that they've had a nice surge in growth here in recent years, but they're also expected to have a flat year for fiscal year 2018. And I think those kinds of things always have a short-term impact on stock prices. Looking at it for the future, it's not expected to grow very fast for the next couple of years. There are quite a few analysts that are giving forecasts for the next two years. The analysts have a decent record. The company has either met or beat estimates the vast majority of the time on both a one-year and a two-year forward forecast. So I kind of like that aspect of it. If the company traded at its normal multiple, which has been about 14, you could see you have 29% possible total rate of return for this year. And going out a couple of years, it could compound at 16. If you went out to three years, it would still be double-digit rates of return. So it's a very interesting time to be taking a look at Intel from a standpoint of valuation. If I shorten the time frame here, you can see that the stock is trading below its historical normal PE as well as its theoretical 15 PE or 13 PE if you focus on the normal PE. My next research candidate in the electronic tech sector is Jable Circuits or Jable Inc. Electronic Components the company makes. Again, you see this whole thing about technology and, and you see how crazy the stock market you know can be at times and how overvalued this stock got and how these periods of high valuation always lead to really poor results going forward, where on the other hand, periods of low valuation tend to give you at least decent rates of return. A lot of cyclicality here. The company has been paying a dividend since 2006, but it doesn't grow their dividend very much. I want you to notice that their dividend growth rate is actually very low at less than 2% per annum. From a forecasting point of view, the company is expected to grow at double digit rates for the next couple of years. And so again, depending on what valuation multiple you would put, there could be a lot of money to be made in Jable Circuit. Their Scorecard, however, is a little suspect compared to some of the other stocks we've looked at. If you look at a summary, they, this is because of the cyclicality, I think, here. The analysts miss this company's forecast quite a bit. So I would take a, you know, kind of a jaundiced look at what the estimates might be because you can see periods of time where there's been a lot of cyclicality in this stock. My next research candidate is KLA 10 Core Corporation. It reminds me of some of the other stocks we've looked at here in this sector. Again, you see the high tech bubble valuations. You see stock price is kind of going where earnings went in the long run. The company did actually lose money at the depth of the recession. They have a June fiscal year. Since coming out of the recession, though, their performance has been pretty good, both on an operating basis as well as a stock price basis. You can see they've actually outperformed the stock market since June of 2012. So it's the kind of company you can make money in if you buy it at the right valuation and at the right period in their cycle. You know, we're looking for double digit returns over the next couple of years on this stock based on currently trading at a blended PE of 13.8 with a 2.7% dividend yield. It does have 52% debt, which I think is important to at least take into consideration. My next research candidate is LAM Research. Again, this looks a lot like applied materials it's in the same business that we looked at earlier. The normal PE here is kind of a whacked out number when you look at this time frame. So let me shorten that 
because if you look at it normally, it's about a 14, 15 times earnings company. There is cyclicality in their earnings growth. When the times are good, the price tracks that. When we get into some bad earnings, it also prices that. The stock got very cheap at the end of last year, the beginning of this year, and it's now been kind of recovering, reverting back to the mean, if you will. Forecast for a negative year this year, which is what caused this original drop. I'd say it's fairly valued today. You might have to be patient with this one and own it a couple years to make any money. Now, there are some some analysts that are forecasting a dividend cut. I don't know if I put any credence in that estimate there or not, because keep one thing in mind about these forecasting calculators. You know, I, I like to tell people the one thing I can say with perfect certainty about these calculators are that they're wrong. They're estimates and they're subject to change and it has to be constantly watched. But these guys are forecasting a drop in the dividend, which I'm not really sure what their logic is there, but you can see it on the historical graph as well. My next research candidate in this group is one that's relatively well known. Name in the inter entertainment industry, but this is not that Marvel. This is Marvel Technology Corporation. If you look at what their products do, you can go to their corporate website here, which I like to do. They're going to be, you know, they're looking at 5G solutions. They get involved in automotive, consumer products, data center and cloud. It's really a storage company. Again, a lot of cyclicality. They went public during the tech bubble and you saw this, you know, tremendous drop in value because it was overvalued. It kind of tracked earnings here for a while. A lot of cyclicality. Again, a normal P E ratio that's distorted by these old years. If you look at it more currently, it trades at somewhere between 15 and 18 times earnings. It's currently forecast to grow at a modest rate of about 3% this year, followed by a, a surge in growth going forward. The long-term growth rate is expected to be about 10%. But again, as I mentioned earlier, take those kind of things with a, a grain of sand. You know, you want to be careful when you're looking at forecasts. That's really the, your job is to try to validate whether these forecasts make any sense or not. Northrop Grumman is very, uh, it's like deja vu all over again. When we looked at Lockheed Martin, remember I showed you uh, in the previous video, the years of undervaluation, then the surge, it got highly valued, is expected to have a down year this year, which might partially explain the correction it's had. Forecasting graph looks for good long-term growth of about 9% for the next couple of years, about 7%. So it's you know, reasonably attractive with the, the downside being that they are expecting a negative growth of 11% this year, which is partially, I'm sure, what brought the stock down. So this is, again, you want to be looking, your target would be out here in two, and a th two or three years. But if the company's cheaper than it's been in a while. If you look at the historical graph here again, you know, we had two or three years of P.E. ratios into 18 to 20 and even up to the 24 and 25 range, you can now buy it at a P.E. of 13. So that's another aerospace and defense company in the list here, in the broad list of companies. The next company is Envent. This company was spun off from Pentair. They had two businesses, electric and water. This is the electric portion of Pentair, which still trades. You can see it's, you know, went public in April of 2018. It offers a 2.6% dividend yield. There's not a lot of history here, but the company does date back to 1903. So it's kind of interesting. It looks like, you know, it's a very high quality company. Only has 26% debt, triple B minus rating. Decent rates of return going out. This might be one to buy for the dividend, but this would be one you'd want to look at a little more closely because it does have such a short history. Anyway, these are the nine additional companies of the 19 I recommend in this industry. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and found these companies interesting. Now, by the way, I kind of went over this. We don't really have much in the way of an analyst scorecard because obviously the company has only been in existence in this iteration as, you know, the Envent Electric Company since April of 2018. So, you know, we don't have any uh, history about how good analysts have been one year and two year out because we haven't gotten there yet. Again, I thank you all for listening. This has been Chuck Harv. I hope you're enjoying this series where I'm giving you a look at the different kinds of companies and how different they look and how their operating histories are so different in these various sectors. Thanks for watching.